Hello and welcome. The class I'll be instructing and demonstrating during this video is designed for intermediate yoga practitioners. It will be good to remind ourselves what distinguishes what we're doing as yoga. Because it's not the bare feet, it's not the yoga mats, it's not even the postures we'll be forming. It is the awareness of our breathing and of the sensations that every posture and movement pronounce. The word for this in Sanskrit is called triputi, the three part union of awareness, breathing, and body. We can establish it now by you close your eyes, sitting in a posture that's comfortable and yet alert, becoming aware of breathing. To formally open our class, you can join me with the palms together, prayer position, and you can join in bowing the head and then lifting it. And we'll move on from here. First posture we'll enter is tabletop. This simple position where we're aligned on the hands and knees, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. And then the first actions that we'll perform are spinal flexion and spinal extension, which can be called cat pose and cow pose. We'll move continuously between these postures, breathing at a relatively fast pace and small size. And when you move like this, you emphasize the lubricating effect on the joints, the heating effect in the body. For three more, we'll all slow the speed and increase the size to emphasize the strength stretch effect. Coming to neutral in the spine, feeling very stable in the body, extending right arm and left leg to sun bird pose, breathing. Hand and knee land, left arm, right leg extend. Tabletop. From here, left hand will come to the center line of the body, either on the palm or potentially the fingertips. And then we'll twist the spine. We'll twist it to your right. Right arm reaches. Then we come back to neutral. Right hand plants. We come to get symmetrical. Twisting left. We'll repeat this action, adding an arm movement. You twist, and then the right arm reaches behind the back, 
toward left hip. Holding here about two breaths. Right arm extends, spine neutralizes. Repeating, twisting left. Reaching through the arm. Arm extends. Here, we'll do this action circling the rib cage. You end up passing through cow pose, rounding out to the side, and up passing through cat pose, rounding out to the other side, continuing to circle. Reversing now. Pausing, we'll draw another circle. This one with the pelvis coming around the knees. Really rounding, especially out to the sides. Lubricating the hips. And reversing. Tabletop position, and from here, hips will come back into child's pose. We'll call it an active child's pose, where the hands are crawling forward, elbows are up. Another two breaths here. Then we'll step the hands toward the right so that you reach about a diagonal angle with the arms away from the pelvis. And separate left hand and left hip from each other. Breathe into that left side. And with one or two steps through the hands, we come to the other side, where you emphasize the distance between right hand and right hip. Breathe into the space. Hands will come back to center. From here, we'll drag the hands back and come upright into student's pose. And upon arriving, arms will reach forward and upward. Hips extend, arms reach high, a strong abdomen anchors a back bend. Then we come into this position we'll call deer pose, where arms are forming cactus pose, hips pull backwards, spine leans forward very actively drawing the arms backwards so your back is very strong. Breathe in. From here, pelvis comes back farther, spine leans forward more, arms are still lifting until you get very low and then arms release. We come into child's pose with arms, forearms down neck to legs. Then we Rise from here, chest comes forward and upward, hips are extending, arms lift again. Lifting up through deer pose, everything is extending. Then arms will come backward and downward while the spine curves. 
and the hips lower. And we'll repeat this, inhaling so the lungs are full when the chest is open, exhaling out of it. From here, we'll interlace the fingers, press the palms forward, extending the elbows, activity through the arms, perceiving sensations in the palms. From here, drawing the hands back toward the chest, connecting the wrists, the base of the palms, and then making this action where you roll the wrists around each other, elbows extend and bend in order to make it happen, preparing the wrists to bear our body weight, can come down, we'll untuck the shins, extend one leg and then the other, and we form staff position. Pelvis cannot be tilting backward. If it is, modify so that it can neutralize. Then the spine is vertical and arms will extend, holding staff position for about three breaths. From here, we'll twist toward your right. Right hand to the ground, left hand outside right leg. Spine stays vertical here while spiraling. Undoing the twist, resuming staff position, and then twisting toward your left. Working with the arms, spine twisting. From here, back into your staff position. Then, arms reach forward and downward. And your hands will slide or just crawl along the legs. You might bend the knees extra here because all we're doing is leaning forward. You'll hold on to the shins, you'll keep the chest high and open. Pelvis is tilting forward, spine is leaning forward. Hamstrings are stretching, but lower back is holding tension. From here, hands can stay low, and we'll put them behind the hips. Then we'll put weight into the hands, and we'll step each foot back, prepared for a version of the bridge or reverse tabletop. So step one from here is chest lifts high, breathing. Now hips extend to lift the pelvis into our posture. Neutral neck looking at the ceiling. Back side strong, front side opening. From here, hips lower. Then arms reach forward. We lean back enough to lift the feet. You 
could hold the back of your thighs here to support your boat pose. And you may find that you can keep the form of boat pose while floating the arms. Chest is high, breath is steady. From here, feet come down again, hands come down. We'll form the reverse tabletop again in a dynamic way now. So chest lifts high. With an inhale now, hips extend. With an exhale, they lower, but as the hips lower, sternum keeps its angle. Hips extend and bend. Sternum is still tilting upward. Inhale. From here, hips land, legs extend again, arms reach upward, finding staff position once again, and then from here, we'll fold forward. So you lean at first, long spine, and then your body can fold. Hands can come down to some point along the legs, maybe the feet, the neck is long, Head can lower. From here, chest pulls forward and upward. Hands can stay low and come to the ground behind the hips. From here, you can do a bridge with bent knees or straight knees. If you're going with straight knees, you point the toes weight in the hands and the hips extend. And then they lower. From here, we'll reach into our staff position and we'll do movements that we've done but now linked with breathing. So we inhale here, exhale and twist right. Inhaling staff position. Exhaling to twist left. Inhaling staff. With this exhale, we fold forward. With this inhale, we return to staff. This exhale, Arms draw backward and downward. And with this inhale, hips extend into bridge. Repeating the sequence, inhaling, exhaling to twist. Inhaling. Exhaling to twist. Inhaling. Exhaling to fold. Inhaling. And exhaling to bring arms down. Then your inhale leads you into your strong bridge. Exhaling, back down. From here, we'll lie down. So you can scoot forward or whatever is necessary to make room for yourself. Arms can reach forward. Abdomen ensures that you land softly. When you are down, knees bend all the way. Arms will reach overhead. And from here, we'll simultaneously Lift the pelvis and the hands, and then land the hands 
beside the hips, reaching a bridge, and then we'll reverse that action. Coordinating the moving parts as best you can, breathing naturally. From here, hands can come down beside the hips, legs extend to vertical, where we'll stay for just a moment, intense contraction of the quadriceps, lengthening of the hamstrings. Now with strong hip flexors and a strong abdomen, we'll come into upright staff position, legs lower, spine lifts. From here, hands can lower, and we'll tuck our shins once again. And once you've done this, you can walk your hands into tabletop position. Toes will tuck under the heels, and we'll enter our downward facing dog. It can be wise to form cow pose in the spine first, establish your extension and then extend in the knees. Modifications here include possibly bending the knees, possibly lifting the heels. Where we don't give, though, is in the spine. We don't want it rounding. It's long. Exploring this pose anew, even if you've done it thousands of times. Breathing. From here, we'll find plank position, meaning pelvis comes to between knees and shoulders. Controlling that angle for a moment, backward energy through heels, forward through crown of the head. From here, knees will land. We'll form six points bowing. That means spine extends like a cow pose. Chest comes forward, elbows bend backward. Chest won't lower, bearing weight in the strong chest and arms, and then a strong push and a pull leads you to child's pose. Coming forward, tucking the toes once again. This time we'll find eight points bowing, and that means the chest might even touch the floor. That's the aim. So same posture in the spine, elbows bend backward, chest lowers, shoulders don't roll forward, they stay in place. From here, chest comes forward, elbows extend, upward facing dog. About two breaths. Then a gentle transition to child's pose. Coming forward and again forming your eight points bowing. From which we enter upward dog. This time we'll go directly to downward dog. Make the pelvis feel light. A strong push with the arms as you lift the hip. From here, we'll flow through these postures with breathing, inhaling to plank, exhaling to your eight points bowing. Inhaling upward dog, exhaling downward dog. We'll repeat, inhaling, 
exhale. Inhaling. Exhaling. From here, we'll reach a forward fold. The way you'll get there is by taking many steps. Small steps, one heel lifts to make room, the other foot steps, about two inches at a time, until your feet are inside the hands. Run away through the spine to lengthen it and fold it. Relax the neck. From this forward fold, we'll stand. And the way we'll do that is by sliding the hands up the shins, extending the spine, getting it flat like a tabletop by horizontal, continuing on with the help of your strong hamstrings to standing, where we'll reach on a purely vertical plane, arms straight upward, then palms connect at the chest. From here, we'll perform one sun salutation. So, follow the breathing cues if they work for you, dismiss them and breathe naturally if not. We can do four moving, exhale completely. Inhaling, upward salutation. Reach through the arms, long spine bends backwards, strong abdomen anchoring. Strong abdomen draws you back to neutral. Arms can reach forward or sideways as we exhale into a forward fold. Setting the tips of the fingers beside the tips of the toes and with an inhale, left leg steps backward. With an exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling into your plank position. Exhaling, eight points bowing like you practiced. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. With this inhale, we'll do a high, slow motion step of left leg forward into your lunge, exhaling into your forward fold, inhaling, extending the spine to upward salutation, exhaling, palms connect at the chest. We'll take two or three catch breaths. Exhale, inhaling upward salutation. Exhale to your forward fold. Inhaling now, right leg steps backward. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Inhaling, plank. Exhaling, eight points bowing. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling. Remember a high, slow motion step, right leg coming forward with an inhale. Forward fold on the exhale. Extending, upward salutation. Landing in Namaskarasana. Stable, breathing.
from here, hands lower, they come beside the hips. Then we'll step the left leg backward to reach a lunge, making it our goal to land the two hands and the left foot on the ground simultaneously. Great control out of this right leg. Finding ourselves here in the lunge, settling, length in the spine. From here, we'll twist in this lunge. Legs stay the same. Spine twists, right arm lifts. Breathing here. From this twist, left knee will land where you might stay or potentially left knee can now bend and right foot can right hand can grab left foot huge opening in the left thigh and hip flexor breathe and relax into it From here, we'll release the left foot, tuck those toes. Right arm reaches up, then both knees extend. And we find revolved triangle. You can be on fingertips or palm of left hand. Long spine is twisting. Breath is steady. From here, Right knee bends, left hand moves forward. The back leg will give some spring, front knee will extend, and we find revolved half moon. Then, right hand comes down. So feeling stable in the pelvis, long in the spine. And then what happens is we move from the right hip to turn into half moon. Steady breath. Taking on weight in the right leg, coming directly to standing. Calibrated balance. Hands will lower now. Just repeating the sequence to get symmetrical. Right leg is reaching back. Hinging from left hip, bending from left knee. Slowly landing. In your lunge. Settling the lap. Spine lengthens, hips sink. From here, we'll twist our lunge. So right hand stays down on fingertips or palm, twisting the spine. From here, right knee lowers. Left hand can reach back. are sinking here, chest is lifting. Maintaining your twist, right toes tuck on the ground again, left arm reaches up, both knees extend. Revolve. From here, left knee bends, right hand moves forward, 
بهره گرفت با هم Left hand comes down now. You know your alignment, length through the spine. Turning by the strength of the left hip into your half moon. Weight in the left leg. Control transition. Distribution on the feet, pausing. From here, we'll do one thing. It's very simple, and that is flex the right hip. Everything else will stay the same. Your straight right leg reaches forward and lifts. However high that's possible, for about one more breath, then this right leg will reach backward and will hinge from left hip, coming into warrior three. Just for a moment, you can keep hands connected or reach them in any direction. From here, we return to standing, bend right knee, Grab a hold of either the back of the thigh or the shin, draw the shoulders back. Straight left knee, flexible right hip. From here, we'll draw this bent right knee out to the side. And then we'll slide right hand down the inside of the shin to guide right foot against left thigh. Reaching tree pose, or you can do whatever's comfortable in the arms. From here, we'll slide this right foot down the left leg. We'll right toes, a top left foot, the right heel on the ground, outside left foot, left hand on right hip and right arm reaches way up and slightly across the midline. And then you breathe into the low right side, expand that with the inhale. Here, everything comes back to neutral. Weight transfers into the right foot. We do that isolated movement, flexing left hip. Lifting leg as high as it will go. Then reaching this leg backward. Hinging from the right hip. Reaching your warrior three. Arm variation of your choice. Strong right leg leads the body to vertical again. Left knee bends. Maximizing flexion of the left hip and knee. Drawing this bent left knee out to the side. Sliding the left hand down the inside of the shin, guiding your body into tree pose. Your choice of what to do in the arms. There's pressure, subtle pressure, with the sides coming together. Up and down. So opposite activities hold equilibrium. From 
up here. The left foot is sliding down, left arm is reaching up, left toe is atop right foot, heel on the ground outside right foot, right hand on left hip, very high reach, a shallow bend sideways. Breathing into the low left side. to neutral in all parts. From here, we'll lift, we'll spread the toes and lift the heels high. Plant our flexion of the ankles. Then, if your knees are okay with this, we'll bend the knees very slowly. Sinking. Very slow transition. And to toe balance, where we hold with a steady breath. From here, we'll stand up, but we'll pass through chair to get there. So we lift the hips enough to land the heels. At that point, arms come down. Knees and hips will continue extending as the arms draw backward and upward. And then the fingers will interlace. Palms flip upward. Heels lift again. Palm tree pose is all about reaching up. Heels and hands low. From here, we'll move into half moon again, but from a standing position. So we'll stand on the right leg first, hinge from the hip, and turn from that hip. Proportionate actions there. Right hand will reach. on a block or some type of support, could be on the ground. From this half moon, we'll find warrior two by bending the right knee significantly first, lifting the right hand, reaching back through left foot, landing in your warrior two posture, sinking into it, lifting out of it, forward and backward, upward, downward. From here, right knee extends. We take forward triangle. Emphasis on reaching forward. Lots of length in the right side. Then right hand lowers, left arm lifts. From here, we'll find side angle, where the right knee bends, we can put right forearm on right thigh, left arm now reaches parallel with left leg, from here legs stay the same, we pass through warrior two to get to reverse warrior. to a forward facing lunge, back heel lifts, any micro adjustments you need to make to feel stable in the legs. Arms now can go forward or sideways on their way upward. Flag pose. From here, left knee comes to the ground. Spine might curve more, arms might reach backward more. Extended low lunge, strong slow motion, arms coming backward and downward. From here, both knees extend. While 
spine extends, pyramid pose. From here, right knee bends. Step into our forward fold. Sliding the hands. When we get to standing, we'll just roll the shoulders a few times. And pause. Hands can come together. Calibrate the balance. And then we'll move into our half moon, standing on the left leg. Portion it hinging and turning. Opposite reaches through the arms. Settling in and breathing. Too slowly. Left knee bending, right foot reaching, spine coming upright. Long stance, all the opposites equalize. Extending left knee, coming into your forward triangle. From here to your side angle, left knee bends, left forearm on the thigh, right arm reaches away from right leg. Strong left leg, coming to reverse warrior. From here to your forward facing lunge. All the micro adjustments necessary to feel aligned. And we enter flat. Then we bend the right knee, possibly increase the curve of the spine, strong arms draw back. Extends, spine lengthens, and then it might aim to align parallel with left thigh. Left knee bends, and we step forward. From here now, heels lift high, we'll resume our toe balance. Let's get stay down, we could come to prayer. We'll stay here for approximately five breaths or so, a relatively long hold. You can play with closing your eyes. Here, eyes open if they're closed, then we'll put the hands down 
with the arms outside the legs. Knees are squeezing against each other and into the chest. Hands flatten. We put as much weight into the arms as possible while maintaining the angles of knee and hip. Leaning your weight forward, putting some, maybe even most, maybe even all of your weight in your arms. And exiting. Coming into your toe balance once again. From here, we'll practice crow pose. Knees will separate, arms will come down inside of them, palms flat, fingers spread, knees come high up the arms, above the elbows, hips lift, and then again you transfer weight into the hands. It might be some, it might be most of your weight, it might be all of your weight, in which case you could connect the big toes. Steady breathing. Exit this into a deep squat. Feet come down spread to about heels hip width. Knees are bending, spine is lengthening, hands can come to the chest. along the way. The toes will point forward, the knees will keep some amount of bend, neck relaxes, and we create a sway action. Very slow, very heavy. Sinking once again into your deep squat so the hands can come down, toes point outward again, knees bend, finding your posture. You can concentrate attention down in the sacrum area, the back middle of the pelvis. or step into plank, your choice. And if crow worked well for you, you can hop from crow to plank. You would put the hands down in that case and enter as much of the crow as you are entering. And then strong arms as the legs hop back and land lightly into your plank position and will turn plank on its side. We'll come on to your left hand first. You can choose to stagger the feet right in front of left, or you can stack them. Stable left shoulder, strong midsection. Right arm comes down. Reflecting the same variation of your side plank now with right hand down. Left hand lowers. From here, knees can come down and we'll take upward dog. Chest coming forward, hips sinking. Shoulders roll back. Sternum tilts upward. We drop the inhale deep into the lungs. Getting the 
child's pose by palming chest forward and then hips backward. Drag the hands back, we'll come to student's pose. Really just to pass through it. Now untucking the shins. Seated once again. From here, you'll step your right foot back. Bending the knee to some extent, you want to make sure spine can stay vertical. So if you brought the foot back too far, your spine might be rounding correct that by creating more space moving the foot forward long spine sharp flexion in that right hip from here you can lean back enough to lift the right foot rotate the right hip left hand holds right foot right hand supports the knee long spine seeing how close you can draw especially the knee into the body from here undoing the rotation but keeping the foot in the air you'll keep hold of it with the left hand you can hold the arch or you can hold the outside. Everything lifts and we twist to the right. Then you face the leg, right hand holds onto it and we twist left. Face the leg, hold it with both hands, maybe around the heel if that's available. You can bend the knee, lengthen the spine, set the shoulders back. So you're compressing the leg into the socket of the pelvis and lengthening the back of it. Of it. From here, right knee bends again. Turn into the first posture of the sequence where you're just lengthening. And then this leg straightens and the left knee bends. Rotating the hip. Ample support on the knee will protect it. Long spine, drawing the leg close to the body. Undoing the rotation. Keeping the arch or holding the outside of left foot with the right hand, extending the knee and twisting. Facing the leg, keeping it with left hand, twisting toward your right. Facing the leg, holding the foot as low as possible. Knee can bend again, remember, and we draw the shoulders back and lengthen the spine. Hold 
up to the shin for a length in the spine, flexion of the hip. From here, legs straight to Form staff position, possibly noticing that it's much more available now at this point in the practice. Hands will come down and we'll lie down now. So again, abdomen ensures that you land softly. From lying down, we'll just hug the right thigh. Then the knee extends and the toes point. You could support the leg in this movement or not. The movement is a circular motion coming from movement in the hip. times one way, and then reversing, big slow circles, clearing out knots and tension and just debris from this joint. Pausing with the leg vertical, again supporting it if that's helpful for ankle circles. Now. One way, and then the other. And then this leg is very straight and energized, lowers to the floor. We hug left leg. Extend the knee, point the toes, and draw circles coming from the hip. Reverse them. Pausing with leg vertical, supporting it if it's helpful, drawing circles from the ankle. And reversing them. Straight leg, lowers to the floor. For a moment, arms can reach overhead. You can make any movement in the wrists and fingers, ankles and toes, discharging excess energy. And then we'll draw the arms down beside the torso. Scoop the shoulder blades close to each other, let the feet fall to their sides. Close your eyes so that we can melt into Shavasana.
the legs of Shavasana, step by step. First you'll step one foot back and flatten that foot, and then you'll step the other foot back. From here, arms can reach overhead. And then you can roll, let's say, onto your right side. The head will rest on the right arm. Left hand presses into the ground, helping you upright into a seated position of any kind. And upon reaching our seated position, we'll just become alert. So nice long spine, your eyes can close again. We'll formally close our practice by bringing the hands together in prayer position and bowing our heads to each other, to humanity. Namaste. So thank you for joining me. My name is Nick Fortino. This has been an intermediate yoga asana class. I wish you well.